There's something significant going on with the way Apple is doing the storage on its Apple Silicon Macs, and it all started with the new M4 Pro Mac Mini. This new Mac Mini, as I'm sure you're aware, represents the first time that Apple has actually gone backwards and added removable storage to one of their devices. But the way that Apple has made the storage on the new Mac Mini is different from how it has worked in any of their other devices. So let me open up this M4 Pro Mac Mini and show you what I'm talking about. So once we remove that fan assembly there, we can see the storage module that Apple is using. Now, crucially, my Mac Mini here is the base model. And that means that we have a total of four 128 gigabyte NANDs here, but this module actually represents a pretty big shift in the way that Apple is building these modules. You might remember from my video upgrading the Mac Studio that that machine has two slots for a total of two modules if you want the eight terabyte SSD configuration. And that's because up until now, the largest NAND that Apple was shipping were one terabytes. So if you ordered eight terabytes, then you had eight one terabyte NANDs grouped together to form that SSD. But the M4 Pro Mac Mini can also be configured up to eight terabytes. And this storage module very clearly only has space for four NANDs on it. And there's no second storage module or anything in there. So what that means is that Apple has had to figure out a new way to build these storage cards. You can now get this with four two terabyte NANDs on it. And that is not a configuration that Apple has ever shipped before. And it has some pretty big implications. So I wanna dive into how storage works on Apple Silicon Macs and what this might mean for the future. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Sihu and their Doro C300 ergonomic office chair. With a self-adaptive lumbar support, pressure-reducing seat, independent backrest, and comfortable tilt mechanism, C300 is perfect for your office. Sihu spends a lot of time perfecting their ergonomics, so the lumbar tracking system is precisely designed to offer support even if your sitting posture changes frequently. I found this lumbar support really useful while video editing. It kept my lower back supported and improved my overall posture significantly. And I also really liked how the armrests are attached to the backrest. That means you can lean back without having to readjust your arms. It offers up to 112 degrees of tilt, allowing you to remain comfortable in all situations. With adjustable coordinated armrests, headrests, and a pressure-reducing seat designed to adjust to your form for maximum comfort, Doro C300 feels like sitting on a cloud. And it fits into your office space easily, thanks to its clean and minimal design. It's easy to use and really, really comfortable. I've worked with Sihu a couple of times over the years, and every time I review one of their chairs, I'm always impressed by how comfortable and how well-designed they are. So to learn more about the Doro C300, check out the link in the description down below. And with that, let's get back to the video. All right, so we'll come back to our M4 Pro Mac Mini, but first we gotta talk about what this is. Because you'll notice that I keep using the word NAND and module, but I'm not calling this an SSD. And that's because it isn't. I went into more detail in my Mac Studio storage upgrade video, but if we zoom in on a regular NVMe SSD, there's a bunch of NAND, and then there's also this big chip here and that's the SSD controller. It's what manages all of the data on the drive. This doesn't have one because the SSD controller is part of the Apple Silicon SOC. So if I took this storage module and put it into another Mac mini, it would have absolutely no idea what to do with that information. It would not be able to boot. But of course that complication only really exists on these removable storage cards. How does it work in a MacBook? Well, here's my M4 Max MacBook Pro, and this is configured with one terabyte of storage on it. So what you'll notice is we've got modules populated over here, but over here, they're blank. What you can't see here is that this board is actually double-sided, so there's two more NAND on the underside here, and there's also two more blank pads as well. Here is a 16-inch M3 Max MacBook Pro, and you'll notice one, two, three, four, NAND, and this is also one terabyte. So you're getting four 256s to make up that SSD. And again, on the other side here, we have four blank pads. But you'll also notice there's a bunch of extra components all around 
the NAND here, and those are missing from the other side. So even if I wanted to add NAND modules to those pads, I'd have to add the 70 or so components to make them actually work. So what that means is unless you're buying an eight terabyte MacBook Pro, you're going to have blank spots on your logic board. So that's a lot of just empty dead space in order to accommodate the very small number of people that might decide to pay the $2,200 to upgrade to eight terabytes of storage. So this new method that the M4 Pro Mac Mini is using is a much cleaner solution because every single configuration uses all four of these pads. If you buy a 512 gigabyte Mac Mini like me, you get four 128 gigabyte modules. If you buy a terabyte, you get four 256. Two terabytes is four 512s, and four terabytes is four one terabytes. So no matter what configuration you're buying, you're gonna use all the pads. There's no wasted space, there's no empty parts of the logic board. It's so much better. But you might be noticing that there's something a little wacky going on here, and that is that the M4 Pro Mac Mini can be configured with eight terabytes of storage, but the M4 Pro MacBook Pro can't. And the thing is, that didn't used to be the case. In the past, the M1 Pro and the M2 Pro could go up to eight terabytes with eight NAND modules. In fact, those machines used eight NAND modules for the four terabyte configuration as well. If this is starting to get a little confusing, you're not alone here because there's some weird stuff going on in the background that we can really only speculate about. But the long and the short of it is, Apple seems to be simplifying the way that their storage configurations work. In fact, if you have an M3 Pro or an M4 Pro MacBook Pro, open it up. You will find a completely blank logic board in this corner. They don't even have the pads. Now, the most likely explanation behind all of this weird storage nonsense is manufacturing simplicity because I ran the numbers and Apple is manufacturing a ton of different board configurations known as SKUs. Because keep in mind, every single time you click an option on the Apple configurator, that's a different type of logic board that Apple has to manufacture. So when we take a look at, let's say for example, a 14 inch MacBook Pro, you can buy that thing with two different binned versions of the M4 Pro chip, as well as two different binned versions of the M4 Max. And each of those has multiple memory configurations and each of those has multiple storage configurations. Now you'll notice that more and more, Apple seems to be graying out particular options depending on what you select. That is all an effort to reduce the number of logic boards that they have to manufacture. But nonetheless, if we combine all of the different options that you can order on a 14 inch MacBook Pro, there are 32 distinct combinations. That means 32 different types of logic boards that Apple needs to manufacture. And most of the reason for that complexity is storage. If we ignore storage and just focus on the combination of binned SOCs and RAM, that would leave eight different types of logic boards. So we're in this weird situation where we are watching Apple in real time work out that removable storage actually might be better for their manufacturing process. I mean, take a look at the M4 Pro Mac Mini, for example. Because of that removable storage, there's only six combinations that you can configure, and you can already see the benefits to the end user. If you go to a 14-inch MacBook Pro with that same chip, they won't let you equip it with 64 gigabytes of RAM, only 24 and 48. What reason, other than trying to keep the number of board SKUs down, would Apple have to not allow you to order 64 gigabytes on a MacBook Pro when you can do it on a Mac Mini no problem? And you might be saying, well, why didn't Apple do this on the new MacBook Pros? Look, this thing just came out a couple of months ago, the same week as this Mac Mini, and it's still using their old storage method with all this empty space on the logic board. Well, the reason for that is quite simple. This is an existing chassis and an existing board. It's a spec bump. Apple doesn't wanna reinvest completely reworking the logic board on an existing chassis that's been around since 2021. It's gonna take a total redesign before Apple's realistically going to implement this new solution. So as far as I can tell then, this module is the best evidence that we have that Apple might, very, very strong emphasis on the word might, 
bring removable storage to the MacBook once again. Now I might be wrong. Maybe Apple only did this because the form factor of that Mac mini was such that they didn't have room on the logic board, so they wanted to stick it on this little daughter board instead. Or it could be due to manufacturing complexity, and Apple might still decide not to employ this technology on the MacBook Pro in the interest of making it as thin and light as possible. But just maybe, this new technology could open the door for Apple to simplify their manufacturing, reduce the number of SKUs, and give us removable storage on the Mac once again. I'm gonna be crossing all my fingers and my toes. Here we go. Please, Apple, I beg of you. But don't do it for us, Tim. Do it for you. Simplify your manufacturing. You don't need to make 32 logic boards. You only need to make eight. And don't waste all this empty space. You could put batteries here. Do this. It's better. <sighs> anyway, that's my ramblings. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is something that Apple might actually do or if it sounds like I'm just a crazy person because that's very much possible. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.